Shall we play a game? Oh. <laughs> I think I missed him. Yeah, weird, isn't it? Yeah. Love to. Hey, it's Tom from Texas, and it's time for another floppy deep dive. And today we're going to be diving into another edition of What's on That Floppy? So what's on this floppy? I don't know. I haven't loaded it up yet, but when we do, they usually have games, games, and more games, some demos, some utilities, and we'll check out everything that's on here. So if you love the 80s, you love retro computers, you love retro software, this is the place for you. So go ahead, pull up a chair, grab a joystick, and let's dive into these games. So this video is sponsored by PCBWay.com. So go check out PCBWay.com where they're having their 8th anniversary sale going on right now for the month of July. Yep, they're giving back to you guys. Since you purchased stuff from them, they want to give back to you and show their love. So they're having different things they're doing. They're doing free coupons, they're having anniversary sales, they're having drawings. So it's just a really cool way for them to give back to the retro community. So check out PCBWay.com. So the first game we're going to be looking at is Law of the West. And this game came out in 1985. It was developed by Accolade for the Commodore 64 and also the Apple II family. So we're going to be looking at both those versions. But first we're going to focus on the Commodore version. And I was a huge fan of this game. I love the graphical adventure type game that this was where you get to make your different choices and pick the different things. And you could be either a saint or you could just be a bad guy. Or you could be whatever you want to be and see what happens and what are the consequences. Obviously, if you're bad, your consequences is most likely you're going to get shot at or you're going to need to shoot somebody. And so you gotta be ready to prepare to do that. And the good thing about the Commodore 64 and its controller is you could draw rather quickly and get ready if someone's gonna be shooting on you. So you had a really good chance. And then there was relationships you had to build because you had to be good. You had to be good to the doctor because if you made him mad and you got shot, he's not gonna save your life. So you, you don't want to make a bunch of enemies, but you're trying to get as much information out of people so they can tell you that someone's going to be robbing a bank or they're going to be hitting the train or whatever the case might be. So that was the cool part about the Commodore 64 was just the interaction with all the different characters. And I loved it. This was a front and back. So if I just did this one, that would be it today. But I'm doing a, one more floppy after this one since it was just one game. But Law of the West was one that I played a lot. And it does have good playability at first. But after a while, you've seen all the consequences. you said all the different things. And then it's just not quite the same anymore. And so you can't just play it forever. But when you first get it, I don't know anyone who didn't just love it. And like I said, it's a good where you could pull your gun out really fast. I loved how the joystick control worked on that. Um, when you get shot, you could either black out. Sometimes the doctor's there to help you. If he doesn't want to help you, he'll just leave you for dead. Or if he heals you, you can come back and keep playing it. And the goal is to make it to sunset. So you're just trying to survive to the end of the day. And you meet all these different characters and talk to them. And you just try to do the best you can to, and survive to the very, very end. So some of the characters you interact with in this game is Belle, she's a female cattle rustler. And then there's Little Willie who's willing to tell you a secret. You got your deputy who likes to drink. You got your doc who's grumpy and cynical and I think he likes to drink too. Uh, the Mexican kid who's a fugitive that came across the border. You got Miss April who's a school teacher and likes to enjoy spreading gossip. And then you also have Miss Rose, who's the saloon hostess, and she tries to seduce you. So that's your kind of your maybe love interest. Maybe it's Miss April. I don't know. But there's only four locations in this. There's the saloon. There's the Wells Fargo stagecoach office. There's the train station. And there's the bank. 
So that's the different locations that you go to. And the game ends when the sheriff's shot and the doctor doesn't heal you, or if the sun sets after 11 scenarios. And then you get your final score, which is based off of various factors, such as how you dealt with the different characters, how many crimes you prevented, and even your success with the ladies. And if you just choose to shoot everybody, you're going to receive the lowest score possible. And Law of the West, it kind of had some mixed reviews when it came out. Uh, like I said, most people are really impressed with it and the graphics and everything. But it was just too short. And that's what I, my feeling about it. Once you've played it and seen it all, it, you're done. But going back and playing this again after 30 years was amazing. Now, something that I did notice is I tried to use my crack version that I had as a kid. And that low time on there, cracked by Eaglesoft, was horrible. I was waiting and waiting, but as a kid, I didn't know the difference between the different locations. But now, I have the original. So I loaded up the original. They've got a speed loader on there, so it flies through it. So you get to the next one rather quickly. So the original is much different loading time not the gameplay wise but loading time than a cracked version of it and I just found that to be interesting so now let's look at the Apple 2e version of it all right guys so this is the Apple 2e version of law of the West and you can see immediately how the colors are different but it's the typical Apple 2 type colors where everything's kind of purplish and blue and reddish and it kind of just blends all together and this version I do not like as well as the Commodore 64 and here's why I, the controller and it might just be my controller I only have one on the Apple IIe maybe I need a better one I didn't try to use the keyboard but my controller did not allow me to draw very quick and so it slowed me down when I was interacting and it made me uh, very vulnerable where I got shot very easily because I just couldn't draw and I couldn't really get my s the scope the sight on the right guy that I was shooting so it kind of messed me up there but again love looking at the different systems and seeing what they look like because all I ever knew was the Commodore 64 so loading this up this was the first time I ever saw it today first time I ever played it today and I just wanted to give you an honest review of what I thought about it. But again, just very cool. Let's just look a little bit of the gameplay. So next we're going to be looking at the video game War Games based off the 1983 movie starring Matthew Broderick. And it kind of reminds me a little bit of Missile Command where you kind of shooting the, where the lines are coming down and you got to shoot the lines. And basically on the Commodore 64 you have these different areas on the screens. There are six different screens and they represent different areas of the United States. And you've got enemy missiles, planes, and subs, and you have that can attack for you so you could use that when you're being attacked. And so you got to do different things to intercept them so they don't hit you and take out your, you know, strategic offensive, your weapons that you're shooting at them. And each type of defense has strengths and weaknesses. Missiles are fast, but they're limited in range. Planes are slower, but have unlimited range. Uh, satellites are better all around defense, but they're only available every so often. And sometimes weapons aren't available at all. And so some en enemies are resistant to certain weapons, and you just got to learn that over time. And I was just trying to remember this game again and how to play it. And so I 
played it on both two systems. I played it on the Atari and I played it on the Commodore 64. Now it was also released on the ColecoVision and I didn't include that version on here because it's not a mini spaces but I'm just kind of focusing on the 8-bit computer systems. And so we're going to look at the Atari version but when I compare the two, the Commodore 64 to the Atari, I'm going to go with the Atari on this one guys. I think the Atari gameplay was much more fluid and easy and we're going to check that one out. So let's look a little bit at the gameplay here and then I'm going to switch you over and we're going to check out the Atari 800XL version. It thinks I'm Falcon. So now we're going to look at the Atari version of this one. And you can see on the map, you've got different DEF CON statuses for each of those six sections I was talking about. And as your bases and cities are struck, the DEF CON indicator for each of the areas will count down. And when it reaches one for a minute, or when all the cities and bases are destroyed, a counter-strike is launched and the game's over. And the game's won by preventing a counter-strike long enough for you to cease fire to be reached. And there's eight different difficulty levels to progress through this as you get the hang of it. And a, a two-player mode was on the Coleco version, lets one player use the roller controller to guide and fire weapons, while a second player inputs keyboard commands. So kind of a little interesting insight to the Coleco version, but you don't have that on the Commodore or the Atari version of this game. And like I said, I love the Atari version of this game. It actually when I'm striking and I'm sending missile, missiles, it's actually hitting on that Commodore 64. If you noticed when I was shooting, I, it just, I couldn't hit anything. This one I could actually score. I'm doing what I'm supposed to be doing. I'm using my missiles. I'm using my subs. I'm using my airplanes. And I just really enjoyed playing the Atari version. And so wanted to show you a little bit of that one. It's very similar. It looks a little different in colors, but very similar to the Commodore 64, except the gameplay is much, much better. And it actually works when you're trying to take out these enemies. So thumbs up, Atari. You beat Commodore on this game, War Games. And I love that movie. It's such a classic, right? All right, let's go ahead and move on to the next one. So next you're going to be looking at a game called Master of Magic and it's a role playing video game that came out for the Commodore 64 and the ZX Spectrum and we're going to be looking at both versions of that game and basically in that game you control an unnamed hero who's dragged into a strange world by a Master of Magic while exploring caverns. The music for the Commodore 64 version was written by Rob Hubbard and you know Rob being very popular in creating music for the different video games so always cool when he's the one who actually does it and this game was fun I like the setup I thought it was very unique even though you're just a dot up in the corner and you're running through these maps I love how the different characters show up at the bottom of the screen so you know what's in the area like if there's a scroll in the area you'll be able to see it or if there's a monster that comes into the room it'll show up big at the bottom and I thought they did a really good job of you know making this gameplay actually fun and you can do a bunch of different stuff from run to cast spells to fight and you get inventory and so I enjoyed this one what I didn't like was the scrolling on the side sometimes it scrolls too fast for me and i can't read what it said at the time and i don't know if there's a way to go back to read it but sometimes i didn't know if my uh when i cast a spell if i actually did hit an enemy or if they hit me because it's just scrolling so fast i i would never know but i love all these different rooms and areas that you've got to explore and it was really a great game and it came out to had good reviews when it came out um, it's a lot of fun to play 
Uh, I know I read the review from Zap64 and they gave it an 88% back in the day. And I agree with them. I've, if you've never played this game, The Master of Magic, and I have a feeling a lot of people haven't played this game, I would recommend downloading and checking it out. Uh, it came out distributed by Mastertronic and it came out under their MAD label. Apparently they broke up into different labels besides just Mastertronic. But this one was just a fun little adventure game that they created and a big fan, give it a huge thumbs up. So let's look at a little bit more of the gameplay and then we'll jump over to the ZX Spectrum version of the game. So now we're going to be looking at the ZX Spectrum of the Master of Magic. And I liked it on the ZX Spectrum. It, it played really well. And I don't really see huge differences between the uh, Commodore 64. Since the detail of the graphics, you're just a dot in both of the games. They didn't have to do too much. Now the colors are a little bit different. But as for the gameplay and exactly what you do, it was actually exactly the same. I did feel like that the scrolling's a little bit slower and I could take time to read it like the, when the bat's attacking me, unlike the Commodore 64. So for that I give the ZX Spectrum two thumbs up because that was my biggest complaint of the Commodore 64 version was the fact that those just scrolled way too fast and I couldn't actually do it. And when I attack, this one actually pops up whether you attack in the bat or whatever. Where in the Commodore 64, it didn't pop up what I was attacking. It just kind of cast a missile at everybody and they call it kind of hit. So as for that, I like the ZX Spectrum version better because I just thought the gameplay smoothness and, and they kind of fixed everything I didn't like about the Commodore 64 version. So if I was going to play between the two of them on this one, I'd give it to the ZX Spectrum. I think that it's basically just they did it much better and that it was easier to play and it's much more uh, slower, right? And maybe I have a PEL version on the Commodore 64. Maybe that's the reason it's so fast and it moves fast and this moves slow. That could be a huge reason and a big difference. But again, this is the PEL version of the ZX Spectrum, so that's why I liked it. And you kind of get a better idea. And if you didn't understand what that means, basically, the, in America, the NTSC version, everything moves faster uh, and so than the PEL version. So when you get a PEL game that's normally programmed to move slower, we would always speed it up. So us over here in the States, we had to play everything times two. So when that's what they mean by the difference and everything kind of just went too fast. So love the ZX Spectrum. Give it two thumbs up. Let's go ahead and move on to the next game. So next we're going to be looking at the game Spin Dizzy. And Spin Dizzy came out on a lot of different systems. The Commodore 64, Apple II, Atari 8-bit, uh, the ZX Spectrum. And we're going to be looking at all those. So I'll give you a little taste of each one of those just so you can see it. And Spin Dizzy is an isometric computer game that combines action and puzzle games and it always makes me think back to Marble Madness when I play these games that have this. Uh, it kind of reminds me of Gyroscope that I reviewed before and we played. Uh, you got to navigate a series of different screens and explore the landscapes and it's all three-dimensional and you got to collect these different gems while you're going along and I you know, it. I played it a lot on different other games, and, and what I was thinking, you know, these are normally not my kind of games. Uh, the reason is I just don't have the skill with the joystick to keep those in line like I wish I could, so it frustrates me. So it's hard for me to play long. Not that it's a bad game. I think it's a good game, and if you're good at it and know what actually you're doing, you probably would really enjoy it. Um, 
I I wanted to enjoy it. Uh, I thought it was good. To, you know, I kept playing it and playing it, and I can't decide which version I like or if one's better than the other. But I did learn that I can actually change between different things. You know, I could be either it, it looked like a ball to me, or I could be a spinning top, or I could be a gyroscope. I mean, I could be all these different things, and I. I like that. I like that there's a little bit of difference besides just, you know, climbing up on the walls and trying to get enough speed to get there without falling off the ledge. But all I do is fall off the ledge. It is just a struggle for me to make it and, and do well with this. Um, this game did really good in the UK. Uh, I don't know how well it did over here in the United States. Uh, like I said, they they had it on a lot of different systems, so they both could have their Commodore and their ZX Spectrum that this one came out on. And we're going to be looking at all those so you can see the different ones. This one was actually released in uh, 1986. Uh, when it did come out, it had huge reviews. People loved it. Uh, Sinclair gave it 9 out of 10. Zap Magazine gave it 98%. So there was a lot of good stuff about this game. It's just not my kind of game. And that's all I'm saying. I, I gave it a shot, but I just don't have the skills, guys. I just could not stay. And it drove me nuts falling off the wall. And I'm just being honest with you. But I think if I had time... After playing it on four different systems, I think each time I got a little bit better and a little bit better. And I think if I played it more, I could actually, you know, get better at this game. I do like that it's a puzzle game. I like the fact that, you know, you got to figure out the, the right way to go into the different rooms to get the gems. Where You'll see they're up high. You'll see they're in a corner that you can't reach. And you somehow got to get over there to do it. So that was the thing that, you know, I do enjoy is trying to find the gems and go to the different things. But again, I think it's probably a really good game and I'm sure there's a lot of people out there who love it. I think that uh, if I gave it more of a chance, I could get better. Now, I know they released some sequels to this. Uh, Spin Dizzy Worlds came out on the Amiga and the Atari ST. And I think uh, even it was later ported to the Super Nintendo system. So a lot of people like these kind of games. If you do, I say go out and get this one. It's not, uh, this, this seems to be the NTSC version for me. It's not like gyroscope was where it's flickering and flashing. This one I actually had more control. So now let's look at some of the other systems and check them out. So now let's look at the Apple version a little bit and see what it looks like compared to the Commodore 64. And it's very, very similar. Of course, the colors are uniquely Apple. And I tried to go slow on this one. I kind of like how the top looks with the spinning colors. I thought that was cool. Uh, I tried my new strategy here of not just going crazy, but trying to actually take my time and go up these ramps slowly as you can see I still fell off it didn't help me much but I got actually up there so I was proud that I would climb a ramp but again I just fall and luckily I, it's a time game and not so much when you run out and fell, you kill yourself a lot because if I just had a few guys I would be dead constantly and restarting and restarting but uh this, the levels are very similar. It looks seems like the jewels are all in the same place. So I liked the Apple version. As you can see, I continue to go slow in the Apple version and not go too crazy. So I give it a thumbs up. Let's go ahead and move on and look at the next system. So now we're going to look at the ZX Spectrum version of Spin Dizzy. And the spin dizzy on this one i liked it i i thought again it's perfect for the zx spectrum right they're they're, they're not so much have to worry too much about the graphics and so forth and i thought they did a great job with the greens and whites as you could see going in here looks exactly like the other games and uh just just try to play it a little bit different to see if i could again go a little bit quicker which really wasn't working for me on this version. But I wanted to check this out. This is my first time playing the ZX Spectrum one. And 
I, I again enjoy this one I think it's fun I just don't think <laughs> I'm just not very good at it guys but uh, learning where all the different gems are and just all these levels you know are, are, are the same but it's so cool how you could play you know four different systems and you get to see four different things and just I, I just enjoy it and I like I said I think I get a little bit better each time and I don't know if it shows it comes across on the video but I felt like I got kept getting better as I went on as I just fall off the ledge but uh Again, I don't know how you keep from falling off that ledge just using this joystick and with the one button. I just need more detailed controls. So let's go ahead and move on to the Atari version. So last but not least, I'm going to look at the Atari 800 XL version. And I didn't start right at the beginning. I wanted to just show you guys some different levels and so forth. So you get a little variety of how all the different screens. And I don't know how many different screens are in this game, but it feels like a lot. The world seems huge when you're scrolling around on these different ones trying to solve these puzzles. So let's just look at a little bit of this Atari gameplay so you can see the differences. I like the graphics. I thought the graphics looked good. Uh, you could see in one of these levels where the ball's rolling around and you kind of get a different idea of that's kind of what you could change into that little ball. So just wanted you to show you a little bit of differences on the Atari until we moved on to the next game. So next we're going to be looking at a game called Sentinel for the Commodore 64 and this game came out in 1985 and it was published by Snap Software that made so many cool different games and this is kind of an arcade shoot 'em up first person game and it's actually a sequel to a game a game that I never played called Dimension X and you join the Warriors of Dimension X to continue the fight against evil and this time it's flown in outer space and you're controlling the space jet and you're going you got 50 different sectors that you're going in star clusters and you got to go in there and clear them one by one uh, this shouldn't be confused by the game the sentinel which apparently is out there also and it is a completely different game this one came out first this one like i said was in 1984 and basically you just sitting in the cockpit of your space jet and you examine the view in first person perspective and you accelerate and decelerate your jet and you move in 360 degrees and you shoot the enemy spacecrafts and during the mission your radar helps you to detect enemies out of your view um, and then your energy is exhausted over time and your shields decrease every time you get shot so it's a typical space type adventure game that we have all come and love I think this one is okay I'm not a huge fan of it just because and usually when it's a snaps game I love it but not so much here I just give it a C um, you know it's, it's just an average game to me and it, it could have been better and I just didn't really couldn't get into it for some reason. I wanted to. I tried. I sat down to play it. And it just didn't, you know, uh, raise my flag. So other than that, it was okay. If you like these kind of games, I'd love to hear if you've ever played this game before. And let's go ahead and move on to the next game. So next we're going to be looking at a game called Hollywood or Bust and it came out in 1986. Again this music was composed by Rob Hubbard and wh what you do in this game is you're a wannabe film star named Buster poss possibly uh, after Buster Keaton who kind of bears a resemblance of the character and you wander around this 1920s film set and you're searching for five Oscar statues while you're being chased by policemen and then the studios are also haunted so gust uh gust ghosts come out of nowhere and attack you and i did not 
mm, I did not like this game. Uh, I, it had potential. I thought it could be better. It's just a budget game. It's another Mastertronic game. And I just didn't realize how many Mastertronic games. They definitely put quantity out there for sure. I don't know about quality, but definitely did quantity out there. And uh, so what I didn't like about this is... You know, you die once and it's over. So it's action from the beginning and you try to do the thing. You throw in custard pies, you throw them at the police, you throw them at different things. But that stupid ghost just drove me nuts. I mean, I couldn't just do anything. It would just come immediately out and grab me, kill me. And then I go a little bit, grab me, kill me. Uh, I did the crossing of the street and, you know, getting past all the police officers to get to the other side. But just never could get going to actually just enjoy the game. So I give this one a D. It just wasn't good. And um, I don't know. If you played it and I'm missing something, you guys let me know. But I give it a thumbs down. And I this is the only game platform that I played it on. And I had enough. So let's go ahead and look at the last thing. So that's it, guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please stick around. There's more videos to check out with more games, more utilities, more demos, all for the Commodore 64. So if you love the Commodore 64 and you love software from the Commodore 64, check out these videos. I think you like it.